Hey guys, uh, welcome back. Another uh, beautiful day in the neighborhood. Anyway, I um, hope you guys are doing okay and uh, hopefully you'll uh, have some beautiful weather to um, enjoy a little bit later. But uh, for now, um, I'm gonna record another lecture. Maybe you'll look at it when it's dark outside. So um, anyway, uh, Fox, Lucas, Cameron, um, welcome, and uh, and here we go. Um, we ended um, we ended uh, with the I guess the ultimate result in the Bohr model, and um, that is the um, the energy is the energy is going to be uh, quantized. Um, According to that formula, and we derived that. Um, again, uh, let's uh, let's recall that this is um, modern physics. Uh, this is still the fall 2020. This is going to be chapter five, part two. Okay. So um, don't know if you guys are watching the news, but um, uh, Pfizer uh, actually announced this morning that they had a vaccine, which is um, uh, according to them, 90% effective, uh, really good news. Um, that still, um, still means that it uh, probably won't be available in any great extent for, you know, a while. And, um, you know, we're still, we're still still looking at a tough winter 2021 and most of 21 until um, the vaccine is probably um, disseminated. But uh, just the fact that uh, we're making some progress on that front is is just really um, good news. And um, let's uh, keep our thoughts um, on some um, you know, some continued good news there, because all it takes is a couple of people to have adverse reactions to sort of close that stuff down. So um, um, let's hope and pray that, uh, that, that things are moving on that front. So anyway, let's, um, let's move on the um, hydrogen atoms spectrum, right? So uh, what we want to look at now is the energy spectrum. The energy spectrum for hydrogen. And that was the big, really big success uh, for the Bohr model was that it explained exactly the emission spectrum of hydrogen. And um, we saw a part of that, a piece of that spectrum in the lab last week. Uh, we saw the emission lines that were uh, from uh, the visible part of the electromagnetic spectrum, and, and there, there are numerous other emissions, but we saw a part of that, and uh, those emission lines, their energies were predicted exactly by uh, the Bohr model. So, um, so let's, let's, um, let's kind of go through that. Okay, let's, um, let's recall that um, I'm now going to subscript E, the energy of the electron by E sub n to drive home the point that it is quantized where n is integer. And E sub n is negative 13.6 electron volts over n squared, where n is equal one, two, three, et cetera, okay? So, um, let me draw that spectrum as best I can. It, it's not going to be um, it's not going to be uh, exactly to scale because it scales as one over n squared, as you can see. But I will try to um, to render it as best I can. So um, so here we are. So um, here's um, here's n equals one. The energy for n equals one. It's going to be negative 13.6 electron volts. We would have n equals 2. And E2 is actually going to then be equal to N1 over uh, 4, which would be 2 squared. And that's going to be negative 3.4 
electron volts. There's N3, N equals three. And E3 then is going to be E1 over three squared, which is nine. And that's 1.51, negative 1.51 electron volts. We have E4. This is N equals four. E4 then is going to be equal to negative 0 0.85 electron volts. N is equal to five. E5 then is going to be equal to negative 0.54 electron volts. And I'll end with E6. Okay, so this is then N is equal to six. E6 then is going to be equal to negative 0 0.38 electron volts. Um, as we get higher and higher in quantum numbers, these levels become increasingly congested, right? Where the spacings between them become very, very small. Um, we'll have at some point um, in approaching infinity. And then above that, we have what is called the continuum or vacuum states. That's where the electron is now totally dissociated from from the uh, nucleus. Okay, so um, if we were to excite uh, hydrogen, um, like we did in the lab in, in um, that plasma tube that is under high voltage, um, moving electrons to, uh, to high uh, energy levels and allowing those electrons to then relax back down to lower levels. Uh, we were going to see a number, we would see a number of emission lines. And so for all of the, for all of the emission lines ending back down at the ground state, remember this is the ground state. And then all of these would be considered to be excited states. Okay. And so, um, if, if we were to look at all excited states that would end on the ground state, that is we would see transitions that, um, that look like so. So from going N equals two to one, whoops, N equals three to one, four to one, five to one, et cetera. Okay, and if we were to look at those energies, I'll just calculate, I'll calculate one of them for you to drive a point home. If we were to look for the, for the energy of the photon emitted, and again, each one of these states, um, each one of these transitions rather, as they go from an excited state down to, in this case, the ground state would emit a photon. So photons are going to be emitted. So if we were to look at the energy the energy emitted for the transition going from two to one, then that energy is going to be negative 13.6 electron volts minus a negative 3.4 electron volts, which is then negative 10.2 electron volts. A negative sign is telling you that energy is being emitted not absorbed, in which case it would be positive. And so then we know that um, the energy and the wavelength are related by the formula that we um, uh, developed uh, a couple lectures ago, right? So the energy is gonna be equal to H times F, which then is gonna be H times C over lambda. And if we were to work that out in, into uh, units that are uh, friendly to us, then this is going to be equal to one, two, four, two electron volt nanometers over the wavelength expressed in nanometers. So for this transition then, 
That's going to be one, two, four, two electron volt nanometers um, over, whoops, over the energy in this case, which is going to be 10.2 electron volts in magnitude. It's going to be lambda in nanometers. And if we solve for that, then lambda is going to be equal to 100 and 22 nanometers, which is in the ultraviolet, and we can't see that. And that would be for uh, this transition from n equals 2 to n equals 1. And clearly, all of the other transitions from higher excited states down to the ground state are all going to be in the UV. OK, so, um, so uh, these transitions are all going to be in the ultraviolet. And this is called the Lyman series, the Lyman series after the physicist who, um, who um, studied them. Okay. So now let's um, let's look at um, let's look at all the transitions that land down on n equals two. Okay. So so if we um, if we were to look at um, n equals uh, three, down three to two, would be that one. And then, um, from four to two, and then um, five to two, six to two, and if you remember from what we did in lab, we actually saw those lines. There are two lines in the, the violet indigo, one in the blue, actually it was a beautiful turquoise blue line and one red line. And so now let's, um, let's, calculate, let's calculate those energies. I think we can do that. And I should point out why I still have this diagram up, right? So these are in the UV visible. UV visible, and this is called the Balmer series. The Balmer series, after again the physicist who studied uh, studied those um, UV visible lines, and so let's calculate uh, let's calculate them. So if we were to look at the energy from going from three to two. then three to two is going to be um, 1.89 electron volts. That energy is emitted. The associated wavelength there is going to be 1242 electron volt nanometers over energy and magnitude, 1.89 electron volts. The negative sign there just tells us that that energy has been emitted. And so then that's going to be then 657 nanometers. And that is, that is in the red end of the electromagnetic spectrum. Likewise, if we were to look at the energy, the energy in going from excited state four down to two, then that energy is going to be then negative 2.55 electron volts. The associated wavelength of that emitted electromagnetic energy or photon, the 1242 electron volt nanometers over 2.55 EV. Again, EVs cancel, as you can see in both of those expressions. And we're left with 487 nanometers, which again was in the um, in the blue turquoise, in the blue uh, turquoise region. Ah, sorry. Ah, crapola. <laughs> Hello. Blue turquoise region, 
And so I'll leave it to you to um, calculate the other, um, the other wavelengths. Um, they're actually going to be 334 nanometers. That's in going from 5 to 2 and from 6 to 2. That's going to be equal to 410 nanometers. And these are now approaching, right, approaching, approaching the UV. Okay, and so 7 to 2, 8 to 2, et cetera, would be squarely in the, um, in the ultraviolet. Okay, so, um, so there again, um, you know, um, that's the Balmer series. Um, if we were to look at transitions that would be ending on three, that is um, you know, four to three, five to three, six to three, et cetera. Um, these would all be in the infrared. They would all be in the infrared. And this is the Poshin series, and sometimes called the Poshin box series. And let's just calculate one of those. Let's just calculate n equals four to three, just for the sake of argument. So the energy going from four to three is going to be, if we come back up here, it's going to be uh, 1.51 electron volts, right? negative negative 1.51 electron volts minus negative 0.85, negative 0.85 electron volts. I didn't do this calculation beforehand, but I'll do it now. So that's going to be 1.51, uh, 0.85. It's going to be uh, negative point uh, six, six electron volts. The associated wavelength for that would be one, two, four, two electron volt nanometers over 0.66 electron volts. So it's one, two, four, two uh, point six, six divide is going to be equal to one, eight, Eight one nanometers, um, which is in the infrared uh, portion of the electromagnetic spectrum, and um, the other transitions likewise would be in the infrared portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. So uh, one can see um, that the uh, Bohr model now um, actually served to explain uh, these transitions. Exactly. Okay. Now, once we move, as I showed you in lab, uh, once we move to uh, even a simple atom like helium, uh, the Bohr model failed, and um, and so that that was a hint that the Bohr model wasn't the final uh, the final theory for explaining the spectroscopy uh, of atomic absorptions and emissions. Um, but it was a step in the right direction. And, and actually, it, um, it served to allow physicists to begin to think about um, atomic systems in, um, in, in ways using uh, classical mechanics, again, with this magical, uh, magical quantization of the angular momentum. Um, and by doing so, it allowed to um, allowed physicists to, uh, again, appreciate the quantum nature of both the, um, the permissible orbits and the permissible energies that electrons can have in atoms. And it served to explain the hydrogen atom emission lines. Um, again, as I've said now, three or four times exactly. So it was, from that standpoint, a, a, a huge success. Now, um, you can look up on uh, Wikipedia uh, what are called Rydberg, Rydberg atoms. And Rydberg atoms are pretty, um, actually pretty interesting. It's, um, it's an excited, 
an excited atom, an excited atom uh, with an electron, with an electron in a very, in a very high quantum number state. Okay. Now you can still have bound, bound electrons, right? So, um, you know, as you, as you begin to, um, right, to excite electrons up into, you know, these states that are really close to the continuum, um, it's, it's still a bound state. The electron is still bound uh, to the nucleus. Um, you haven't yet dissociated with it, uh, but you have the potential for uh, for a very high quantum number. And, and you will recall that the radius, the radius is equal to A naught N squared in, um, in the hydrogen atom, where A naught is the Bohr radius. And the Bohr radius is 0.529 angstroms. But you can see that it scales with um, with n squared. Okay. For instance, if you had if you had an excited an excited hydrogen atom, if you had an excited hydrogen atom where the electron is equal to the n equals one hundred and thirty seventh state. then you can calculate what the radius would be actually. So the radius, I'll let you play around with that if you want, but um, actually let's do it. This is gonna be, um, this is gonna be 0.529 angstroms times 137 squared. I didn't do this calculation prior to, um, to this. So let's just, uh, let's just do this. Right, so that's going to be 137 squared. And that's going to be then times the Bohr radius. Okay, and so that's going to be equal to 9.9 .9 times 10 to the three um, angstroms which is equal to 0.99 times 10 to the um, fourth, times 10 to the fourth. Well, hang on here. So that's gonna be, yeah, times 10 to the fourth nanometers. So um, I got to make sure that um, that's three. Yes, so that's going to be that's going to be point nine nine. Did I do that right? Let me just check this calculation here. So it's going to be um, one hundred and thirty seven squared. Um, Point five two nine. That's going to be. I'm sorry. Yeah, nine point nine nine times ten to the three angstroms. So let me um, let me just um, let me redo this calculation here. So that's going to be nine point. Whoops. Right, 9.9 .9 times 10 to the three angstroms. And we know there's one times 10 to the negative 10 meters in one angstrom. So that's gonna be 9.9 um, .9 .9 times 10 to the negative seven meters or 0.99 
times 10 to the negative six meters. Here we go. Times 10 to the negative six meters, which is approximately one micrometer, right? One times 10 to the negative six meters. So that's pretty amazing. So if you imagine um, that, um, right, the diameter, the diameter of a human hair, diameter of a human hair is um, 50 micrometers, or the diameter of a red blood cell is five micrometers. So now this is beginning to approach the size of a red blood cell, which you can actually see under, under, uh, under the microscope. So um, I don't know what I did here, but I um, uh, didn't mean to do that. So um, how do I get rid of this? Uh -oh. Anyway, I'm glad we're at the end of our end of our lecture here. But um, how, do I get, how do I get rid of this? <laughs> anyway, they're Rydberg atoms, and so um, and so um, how do I get? Um, there we go. There we go. Got it. So those are Rydberg atoms. So they're um, very high. Um, a very high quantum number atoms. And believe it or not, you can get an atom which has got a radius on the order of one micrometer and still be in a bound state, which I think is pretty exciting. So you guys can uh, look up Rydberg atoms on Wikipedia. That's your homework. And do a little reading on, um, on Rydberg atoms, which are uh, still, um, still studied. They were a hot topic maybe 20 or 30 years ago, but um, they're, um, they're still systems of interest for um, atomic spectroscopists. Anyway, um, that's the end of part two, and I will upload part three um, in a wee bit. All right, guys, um, have a great one. All right, talk to you later. Bye.